Hi guys, I'm Elena from Amazonia PPC and today we are together going to analyze the demographics report from brand analytics set of reports. Um, I'm going to show you uh, basically why we use these reports, why we find them so important and how can you use them to better communicate your brand to your audiences. Well, basically, um, if you have a brand already registered on Amazon, then you know for sure how important brand analytics reports are. Uh, we're just going to share with you our take on them. Uh, basically, there are uh, five different uh, reports that are consisted in the demographics reports, and you can view by age, household income, education, gender, and marital status. And you can choose different reporting ranges like quarterly, monthly, and weekly. If you are looking to see, like for example, what kind of audiences were more open to your product during a certain holiday, like if you're analyzing Black Friday uh, sales, um, and you want to see a little bit more detailed breakdown of who purchased your product during the holidays on Amazon as a platform, then you should choose a shorter date range, like you know maybe weekly would do. But if you want to learn a little bit more about your audiences and how to communicate uh, your brand message to them better, then by all means, choose quarterly or monthly, even monthly date range will do in terms of providing you the right information. And also, when it comes to collecting the data, it, it will depend on how frequent uh, your search volumes are and how big your search volumes are in general. So it will really vary based on that. So if you have a product that is a, in a very competitive industry, obviously you're going to collect this data a lot faster. So uh, smaller data agents are necessary. Anyways, let's dive right into the, the point of these reports in general, how we use them. We basically use them to uh, understand a little bit better on the Amazon marketplace what works for them. And Amazon is moving a lot in this direction of um, audience targeting and they're most probably going to make uh, remarketing on Amazon a lot, a lot more detailed than what it is right now as soon as they can get enough bandwidth to offer it to, to everyone. So far, this is the current reach of the, you know, remarketing. The, the It's currently developing and it I'm pretty sure we'll see more of it in the future. Um, uh, firstly, we use these reports to understand how do we manage our community management on uh, social media. That's why we use it um, as a first reason. Second reason why we use these reports is to understand what kind of brand messaging we will apply to our display uh, campaigns as well as um, our sponsor brands campaigns, which are currently the only ones where you can do add any kind of custom messaging. I'm pretty sure Amazon will elaborate on this in 2020. Uh, but for now, we use them just for sponsored brands uh, campaigns and also for community management on social media. Uh, we're going to analyze here a sample report for a um, client, uh, for, uh, for an account that's um, in the wellness industry. So uh, we can see here that uh, folks that are purchasing the most are between 25 and 44 years old, especially when you see that a uh, percentage of order product sales out of 100% is like 46%. It's a pretty big chunk of uh, demographic for this brand, which means that they should um, most primarily focus on platforms where these millennials are. So millennials are known to use a lot of Instagram, and they use a lot of Snapchat at the present moment. So that's where this brand should be more present in terms of uh, content marketing, as far as I see it. Like, for example, if we saw that the majority of sales came through baby boomers, people who are older than 55 years, um, then we would focus primarily our efforts, our content marketing efforts on uh, Facebook and also on uh, building our email lists and newsletters because baby boomers are known uh, to uh, known for reading a lot and uh, paying attention to email as a medium. So, depending on which kind of uh, demographic category uh, your most sales are coming from, per percentage wise, you will do your research and then see what kind of platform works best for them. Like for example. If we have only these 
youngest folks between 18 and 24 years old, and we would mostly focus on Instagram. That's where, where they are, and imagery and stuff like that. So, again, uh, that being said, when, you, uh, con- when you're considering entering a new platform for community management purposes, then um, you have to, again, think a lot whether that uh, relates to your product and how can it relate to your product. If you have, like, for example, very young audiences who spend a lot of time on Instagram and you sell a fashion brand, you have a fashion brand, then it's a win-win situation. You have an easy job to do. But if you have, like, a product that requires a lot of uh, manuals before someone can use it and a lot of knowledge to be used and stuff like that, like tools, for example, then, again, you can make some short videos on Instagram showcasing how it's being used and stuff like that. So you really need to understand your product and how, uh, what kind of message you can communicate to your audiences on the platform where they spend most of that time. You should be on the platform where your customers are, um, not only on Amazon, but outside of Amazon as well. When it comes to household income, we also... Um, we use this information to understand um, how can we best adjust the product to according to our um, audiences who purchase it. If we know that, for example, the majority of our um, customers come from a household income that's lower than 50000 then basically that, that would mean that we need to adjust the pricing to fit better the narrative, meaning, you know, we, we can offer them best value for money, maybe two for the price of one if possible, or some kind of coupon codes might work really well on Amazon for these audiences who are in the lower end in terms of household income. If we have, for example, audiences that are pri- primarily male, that are technically savvy, that are in the low, in the higher end of the household income and they just want the best, then we know we should make our next batch of products with our supplier a lot better in quality because they will appreciate it. They're not so price sensitive. So um, there, in this household income uh, graph and in the table, you will learn how price sensitive your audiences uh, basically are and where the majority of your sales are coming from. This is an interesting feedback from Amazon. They have very accurate information about this because um, obviously they're the platform where the sales are happening and you should trust them. So again, you can use this information to target um, users. um, For example, Facebook has uh, stopped offering the household income as as an option, uh, as a targeting option. But on Google Ads, you can use the household income targeting for the USA um, and eliminate the ones that you know won't purchase your product. So, for example, that's one another useful piece of information from the demographics report. Again, education. Um, you will see here how what's the degree of education your customers have predominantly. And we can see that here the majority of our customers for this brand have some college. So, it's... Um, it's more more like an educated uh, demographic than um, than people who have less than a house high school and stuff like that. So the biggest percentage is in a somewhat educated chunk. Uh, so my point is, you should really uh, think about your brand and in terms of content marketing. This is also highly important. If your customers are you know mostly bachelors, graduates, and people who are higher in education and generally, uh, it might mean for your brand that they're thirsty for knowledge. So sharing useful information, um, everything that has to do that's related to your brand and at the same time might be helpful as knowledge for them, knowledge around using certain products like tools, how to use a specific tool and how which kind of materials to use with this tool and how to choose the right tool for, for a specific thing that you were looking to do, um, stuff like that. And share that kind of content on social media, um, specifically on platforms that we saw that according to the age group that they're in, where they spend most of their time, according to their um, education status, educational status, what kind of content they might prefer. And then you tailor, you custom tailor your content according to their preferences as well as, uh, as long as it 
resonates really well to your brand. That's what we do for our brand. It's a long-term strategy. Um, and mostly uh, you can see the effects of it at once. It will take months before you start seeing first sales coming from content. But investing in your content is extremely, extremely important for someone who's building a brand because it's there to stay. Once you post your content, it's forever generating you traffic and uh, it's not growing old. So make sure to post that evergreen content uh, as frequently as possible. And uh, the last two things we have are gender and marital status. Um, this is also interesting. Like, for example, for this brand, we can see that, you know, majority of sales obviously coming from female customers, which means um, you can choose what kind of coloring to add to your product images, videos, um, make your storefront look a little bit more feminine, appealing, and um, the messaging around it, the wording around your copy and your listings should be should appeal more to females. So this is the part uh, in terms of gender um, and in general, like all of the all of these uh, demographic reports that are offered by Amazon are here to help you communicate your message better to your audience. So um, the place to do that is the copywriting of your listing and A plus content and also the storefront. That's where you can do this. So if you know that, for example, your audiences are female, obviously you're going to make more feminine images to fit the narrative and uh, make the copy a little bit more gentle and uh, a little bit more emotional, um, targeting the pain points. And, you know, if we know that it's ladies and the lower end of the, you know, lower end of the household income, then with all of this messaging and uh, your brand being communicated properly to them, if you add a really good coupon code offer for them, it's a win-win situation. It's going to sell. And especially for brands who have, who build their brand loyalty and make the majority of their profit through repeated sales, this is extremely, extremely important. So uh, gender is one of the reports here I find even most useful because we know then how to tailor, how to custom tailor our message for customers, especially for the listings that already exist and we're just looking to improve them. Marital status is the type of uh, report that shows you um, out of, you know, married or single people who purchases the most. There's a huge chunk of information not available yet on Amazon. And I'm not really sure how Amazon drives this information from people because they know where can, they can't really, you know, determine based on someone's opening an account whether they're married or not. So I'm not sure how they know this information, but I'm pretty sure it's accurate for some, in some way. They have really elaborate algorithms to determine how, uh, whether someone is married or not. So this report is being used, again, to custom tailor the message and see, just like round up the whole image around audiences that purchase your products, who can basically, um, these, these reports are here to help you understand if you're doing something wrong with your messaging, with your copy on your listings, and with your community management on social media. That's how we use it. And... Basically, if you have any questions regarding these uh, reports, feel free to comment below and subscribe our, to our channel for fresh content every week. Um, thank you for watching and I'm looking forward to your questions and comments. Bye-bye.